Well, I won the Iron Man, the Iron Lady of this city. And we had a statue of an Iron Man. And we had a, uh, in preschool, we had a rocket ship, you know, that we were in the scientific age. I was a preschool teacher. I was a head start teacher. And we had a little ceremony we had to stop doing because there were so many complaints. I'm going to have to point, so I'm going to do it to you because pointing is, is impolite. I, as this white lady, with all these little white children, would go down the neighborhood and we would see a black man and we would say, all in unison, there goes one! An Iron Man of this city! Well, excuse me, the FBI was coming after them. We had to stop. But everything we did was, you're an Iron Man, you're an Iron Man. And we were a little insensitive or something. It just scared the head. You remember Charlie and this city? I mean, he said, you got to stop doing that. You can't go around saying, there he is. But everything we did had to do with, you can change, you can have a choice, you can work together, <coughs> and you can do it. Now, the two kinds of image changes, we've all put it in one. One is the attitude, the self-image of uh, that most of us are used to. And the self-image change was really <coughs> life, past, future, self. The self-images, the four self-images we dealt with were, uh, I worked with kids who were also out of jail and um, Native Americans in Arizona and they dropped the F-bomb all the time. And what I tell them is, I don't care that you say that, but it's a word of violence. What you're saying is that life sucks. And if that's your lens, that life sucks, then everything you do is going to be because life sucks. If your image is life is beauty, which is the Navajo way of talking about it, that there is beauty in life, or that life is good, then you do things differently. So the first one is that life is good. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's your relationship to it. Then the past. I. I will use the Native American, even though I'm supposed to be doing the old stuff, but th this is all the newest. If you want to get a Native American to absolutely collapse, the only thing you have to say is, you are just like your father, a drunk, a loser. You're just like your mother, a hoe, a slut. You will never be any better. They had an image of the past as binding them. They couldn't escape the past. And so we created the image that your past is okay. It's what was given to you. It's what made you who you are. You have to move on from your past. Your past is approved. And then future. Um, one of my youth, and this is a problem in Native American reservations, one of the youth that I worked with, who actually lives in, in the northern part of the United States, uh, was graduating. And his mother took all his pictures on Facebook. She took a picture of his Captain Brown gown. And two hours before he graduated from high school, he killed himself. And we're still dealing with that suicide. Uh, teen suicide for Native Americans is the highest rate of suicide in the United States is with Native Americans. And part of it, we believe it's a dead end after you graduate. Native Americans don't usually go to college. They, they can't get a job. When you're 18, you graduate from high school, end of life. It's a dead end. So the images that we dealt with all the way back to Fifth City to Arizona is your future has possibilities. You are capable of moving forward. So the future is open. And then the worst of the worst. For natives, for Dene, hell is not a category. They do not have hell in their, in their religion. Hell doesn't exist. But they all use the word hell as in, I'm going to hell. One of the sayings is, you're so bad that not even hell will accept you. I am rotten to the core. I am a nothing. 
and the image, and therefore the act loses. The image has to be you are a what precious, cherished, awesome human being, and you have the same right as anybody else to decide to be who you are. And part of that with the Native American is to be sure to acknowledge their heritage and their tradition and their ceremonies. <coughs> so the four images of attitude that we talked about was life has to be life is good, yourself is accepted, your past is approved, your future is open. And those were the images that we did over and over and over again. Second kind of image change in this pretty much is the last, is you have to be able to give a context for learning. Even though I think that I'm an okay person, I can still say, I can't learn math. Math is just too complicated for me. Or I don't understand this chemistry lesson. So we created contextual images that allow people to understand information. This is from the Fifth City Preschool. You are going to believe it. It's so easy. It is so easy. We took what we call the life triangles, which is something we, is one of our models, and I've got lots of curriculum on it. And we said that in terms of life, you have science, you have humanity, you have spirit. Science, you analyze things. Humanity, you're creative about it. So all of our courses were taught with on the individual pole of science is psychology, the study of the individual. Along with psychology goes art. We always taught psychology and art. On the social pole, sociology is the study of human beings. History, in terms of humanities, is the story about how we are people. So we always taught sociology and history. And then we also taught about the more universal things, which was science and philosophy. Philosophy tells you what science analyzes. So we always did the analytical, the creative, and then the spirit. And Elise's thing that came out, what was that called? Reveal the wonder. Yeah, reveal the wonder. That was this category up here. That was the spirit category. All right, so in the preschool, we had to create new labels because we were getting it from HUD and things like that. So we called it basic, which was science and philosophy. We called it uh, psychology. The third was sociology. Uh, and the, uh, the last course on the spirit we call imaginal, and we have been condemned for using that, <laughs> that model ever since because that doesn't actually say anything, but we couldn't call it spirit or we could call it any of that. Okay, and here's what we said. Matthews came up with this, it's brilliant. Now people were very uh, illiterate and ignorant when they were in the beginning of the United States, not counting the Native Americans, and they used to say all you needed are the three <coughs> R's. Reading, which starts with an R, writing, which they started with an R, and arithmetic, <laughs> so they always said, you got to learn the three R's. Well, let's see if I can do this. Okay, I need to know what it is. Okay. This is how you give a context for learning. Are you ready? Now, everybody see this? Can somebody give me the same as these two, not pins, but same things. Yes! That's the pattern. That's mathematics. Yes, the fingers. That's mathematics. Finding the pattern. Then you label it. That's called two. And then you teach them to express themselves by writing it. It's written this way. And all of our teaching was, what is the pattern in mathematics? What is the pattern in physics? What is the pattern in chemistry? What is the pattern in natural education? How do you label it? And then how do you express it? Reading, writing, arithmetic, that was, uh, that's what we taught. <laughs> okay.
Then we had what we call the tools chart, which, which enabled us to find the tools to do it. Now, I can't do this exercise, but I would love to. Um, what does it mean to be a man in our society or a woman? Uh, getting drunk and getting pregnant is it in the society I'm in. What does it mean to be a man and to be a, a woman? I need a verbalization of it. What does it mean to be either a man or to be a woman in our society? Support your family. What? A man. Support your family. Support your family. You're a man. Okay. We are going to teach the concept. Support your family. And we're not going to do this, but this is the way you do it in a tools chart. You two are going to teach the concept using sculpture. Sculpture. You three are going to teach the concept using a painting. You three, you use music. You three use um, story. Dance. Dance. Did I say dance? Or you yeah. dance? She did. <laughs> I have to look at my mic on this. Um, oh, we've got thousands of them. Uh, you can use mine. You three use mine. Uh, you can use rap. Uh, you can use Go and get all the utensils out of the kitchen and you create something before <laughs> out of that. You teach concepts. We create a tool chart in which every time we did something, we gave a different nonverbal tool. So you could not use the words, a uh, man is someone who is responsible for his family, which cannot be hurt. Instead, they had to use their creativity to teach it. And when they did that, and a chance for it to slip in under unconscious. And that was the tools chart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here are the six steps. For all of you to teach, not to teach, to shape images. And Elise and I use the word shaping images rather than changing because it's a long-term process. What's the old behavior? What's the old image? Know your group. What's the new behavior you want? What's the new image that underlying it? What's the process of change you're going to use? And everything that Elise taught us about those processes, that's what we're talking about. What are the tools we are going to use to do it? What are the messages, once an image has changed, messages reinforce it. So what are the messages that are going to reinform, reinforce that image? And then how are you going to evaluate the progress so that you know that image is getting shaped? This is a lifelong issue. And I don't know about you, Jerry, but when you do your uh, staff meetings, there is always images that are shifting. And what we have learned about being intentional is we decide before we go into a meeting what it is that we intend to shift. So, what questions do you have of anything? 